Good morning, and welcome to the American Cathedral on this Pentecost Sunday, this great feast of the church in which we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church itself, including this morning the welcoming in of seven new members of the household of God through the sacrament of holy baptism. What a gift. What a way to celebrate this day and begin to allow ourselves so much joy after such long, a prolonged period of holding back. We need to continue to keep safe distance and continue to refrain from singing as part of good health and good gesture and caring for one another in the body of Christ. And we are delighted as always that we have such amazing musicians to lead us in that aspect of our worship this morning. There's a lot in worship this morning. It is, there's reason to be excited. I hope that you can feel the energy this morning. A couple announcements to make. This is our first Sunday morning going back to live streaming, so we will be appropriate for this Sunday, one united body worshiping together this morning on this birthday of the church. You may notice that we have the center aisle blocked off to allow for these two microphones so that worship can be heard effectively by those who are worshiping with us online. A special note to those of you who may be seated nearby one of these mics is that they are fairly sensitive. So uh, if you want to offer a comment on worship during which be aware that you may be sharing it with a lot of other people. Uh, but we are delighted that we can be one body together this morning. So in these last remaining worship, in these last remaining moments before we begin our worship service this morning, I invite you to open yourself to the presence of the Spirit. Empty yourself of whatever you may so that you can be filled with the spirit of love and inspiration this morning that comes to us on Pentecost. Welcome. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for Pentecost is verses of the 104th Psalm. We read responsively by half verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In the wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, 
with its living things too many to number. Creatures go small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. You give them their food in the new season. You give it to them, they gather it. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their wrath, and they lie and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
e li condizionerà il mondo legato alla storia dei nostri per quanto riguarda il mercato perché non vanno le c'è la giustizia per chi torna nel padre e non di vedere e infine per quanto riguarda la liberazione della famiglia mondana questo è possibile perché Sant'Anna Sant'Anna non è in questo mondo e ci ha stato giudicato vorrei dirvi ancora tante altre cose le ore non presenziate quando verrà lo Spirito Santo per te verità e guida nelle verità senza complimenti perché non si spera le proprie idee ma vi dire tutto ciò che ha io detto non solo mi dire anche lo stesso figliore e di mi corrige e mi rendere ancora facendo ove con scelta mia gloria tutte le cose che hai i padri sono mie per queste vi ho detto che e gli stesso vi farà conoscere la mia gloria. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, Sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory. Amen.
case you were wondering, what you just heard was the convocation of Episcopal churches at work, of which we, by the grace of God, are the cathedral. You just heard these words in a number of those languages. The spirit which is coming will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. You might be forgiven for thinking this morning that the church is suddenly going through an adolescent growth spurt. Indeed we are, as you can see from the number of pews we had to reserve and keep all of you out of to accommodate all of these people who are about to be baptized, these seven people who are about to be initiated into the body of Christ. They're about to become a part of us, our brothers and sisters, our fellow ministers and co-workers, our care and concern. So it seemed to me that we owe them full disclosure about just what they are signing up for. Not just what it means to be a Christian, but what it means to be a part of the church, especially a part of this church, because there is no such thing as a Christian apart from the church. Now, all of you are sitting up front, and that makes it very hard for you to escape if you decide to do so after you hear what I'm about to tell you. But you should not think that this is all just a one-way gift to you. Yes, in baptism you receive the gift of new birth, but you also take on the identity of a Christian, of a person willing to be known as a part of this place. So maybe we ought to make sure that you know just what that means. I will start by making sure you know what we are not. We are not, and we do not claim to be, a group of people in possession of the only religious truth. We believe that something true has been revealed to us about God, something so true that it has changed our lives forever. But we believe that God is far larger than our capacity to claim ownership. We are not the Catholic Church. When we pray for the Catholic Church, we do so with a lowercase c. We mean the whole church, the universal church, the church to which we are connected in a faith deeper than the differences of denominations. But we are a different church from the church in Rome. And at the same time, we are not quite a Protestant church either. Just look at us up here in these gowns. We believe that there is something inspired, something that gives us glimpses of the holy in the traditions we have inherited. Our spiritual imaginings are inspired by the longings and possibilities of the Bible, but not limited by its words. We are in this place, this remarkable city, but we are not a church of this place. We cannot claim to have any significant part of the difficult and often deadly history of the Christian faith in France. Our story comes from a different beginning, and we are here because of a different history. But because of that, we know that George Washington never sat in our pews. And we also know that even if he had, no one out there would care a bit about it. So, what kind of a church are we? The first thing you need to know about your church is that we are a church in the middle. And not just by accident. We very intentionally take up a position in the middle, in many ways. We are church in the middle between the Roman Catholic Church and the history of the Reformation. We struggle to hold a place of creative tension between one and the other, and that means we are often dismissed by both. We are a church in the middle between faith and knowledge. We do not deny 
the power of scientific discovery to reveal God's truth to us. But even as we do that, we are people of faith. Faith based not on evidence, but on trust. Trust in the promise that God has made to us, a promise that we believe reveals to us a truth that science cannot grasp. We're a church caught in the middle between France and America, and between French and English. We have been in this city worshiping in English for 163 years. Yet the people who came here and who gave form and shape to this community love this country and its people and its language, its complications and its contradictions. And we are once again asking ourselves, led by my brother Dumont, how we might be more welcoming to others if we found at least as many ways to welcome our neighbors as ourselves. Take it from those of us who have been doing this for a long time. Being in the middle can be a tiring thing. Being in the middle can wear you down. We are a bridge. But part of the reason a bridge stands up is that it is always under tension. And here is one thing more, maybe the most important and difficult thing of all. We are a church that follows Jesus Christ wherever that leads us. And what those of us who have done this for a while have learned is that the farther you go on your walk with him, the greater the chance that your faith will take you places you never thought you'd go. Like a kid from the middle of Michigan who is preaching to you from a pulpit in Paris. Because there is nowhere that Jesus will not go, no person Jesus will not reach, no shame Jesus will stop at, no beloved tradition that Jesus will not lay aside to share the urgent truth that love is the evidence God is still alive and at work in the world. So, my friends, this is not a church of the elite or the famous. This is not a church of the nation or of any nation. It is not a church for the perfect or the most theologically astute or for the purest. This is a church for the rest of us. It is a church for the rest of us who struggle in our faith and yet know that our faith is worth the struggle. The world does not believe that God is possible. But we know all things are possible with God. The world does not believe that love can prevail over brutality and force. But we know that love is the only thing with the power to bring justice out of our human failures. The world and Minister Schiappa think that the highest values are the values of the Republic. But we are subjects of another kingdom and another king, not of this world. The world does not believe there is anything at stake in what happens inside this place, but we know that each person who walks by the gate of this cathedral has an immortal soul that is the gift and image of God Almighty, and that it can be hurt and needs to be sheltered and defended. So friends, that is our task. And now? It is your task to provide a place that shelters those who seek and protects the possibility of the sacred in every human life. Today, you are not just joining a faith. You are joining a church. And my brothers and sisters, be in no doubt about this. This church, this church is called by God to change the world one soul at a time. So, all of you, 
Graham, Fuad, Gael, Lawrence, Stella, Nina, Balthazar, will you all stand up? We, and now you, you, are not given the gift of the Holy Spirit for your own possession. We are given this gift for a purpose, a purpose not less than binding up those who have been wounded, weaving back together things that have been broken, breaking down hate and fear with a love that is both strenuous and unafraid. So now we want to hear from you. We want to know that you are ready or that you will help this child take all this on. And then we will pray for you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you because changing the world into the full possibility that God has dreamed for all of us is not easy, and we need you alongside us to do it. So, are you ready? The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I present, I present Fred, Fred Louis, Louis, Louis to receive, receive the sacrament of holy, holy baptism. baptism. Do you desire to be baptized? I do. I present Laurence Anna Golemski to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. Laurence, do you desire to be baptized? I do. I present Nina de Selding for, holy, for to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. Nina, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Thank you, Maureen. We present, present Graham William, William to receive, receive the, the sacrament, sacrament of holy, holy baptism. baptism. I present Balthazar to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. I present uh, Gael to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. I present Stella to receive the sacrament of baptism. I address these questions to the parents and sponsors. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? I ask this question of all the candidates and all the parents and sponsors presenting children. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. My sisters and brothers, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join 
over those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Son. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return. To the Lord. I will, with God's help, will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. I will, with God's help, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. I will, with God's help, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us 
through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctified this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Stella, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got you good, I'm sorry. We're not done with you yet. <laughs> Stella, you are sealed. <laughs> it's going to be OK. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. We receive the light of Christ and bear witness to God's love in the world. Amen. <laughs> sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. 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 Receive the light of Christ and carry God's love out into the world. Amen. Balthazar, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Balthazar, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the light of Christ and proclaim God's love in the world. Amen.
Instagram, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Graham, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the light of Christ and carry God's love out into the world. Amen. baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Nina, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Nina, receive the light of Christ and carry God's love out into the world. Amen. Lawrence, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lawrence, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Receive the light of Christ and carry God's love into the world. Amen. Hallelujah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and mark with Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the light of Christ and carry God's love out into the world. Amen. Before we continue, is there anyone here present who is not yet baptized and wishes to be? Then let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Will you all please rise? Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we receive you into the household of God, and confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
in the number of people we have gathered here together, but in the substance of what it is we are celebrating on this morning. I want to issue special welcomes first to all of our special guests, our baptismal families, friends, colleagues who are joined and to be present for this very special occasion in your loved ones' lives. We are so glad that you are here. You are completely welcome. We are overjoyed that you are here. And we invite you to come back anytime you wish. Uh, it would be a delight to welcome you back absolutely any time. And another special welcome to those who are joining us uh, online for the first time back live streaming for us to be able to celebrate and worship together as one community, both here in Paris and wherever and whenever you may be. It is good and a delight that we're here, on, especially that we might do this on the Feast of the Pentecost when we celebrate the birthday of the church and the unity of the body of Christ, regardless of all divisions and boundaries, including time and space. So we are glad and we welcome you wherever and whenever you are. Um, just a couple things that I want to announce to share for our common life this morning. First is, in just a few moments, we're going to...
ጊዜውና የሚሆነው ኢንሰላቸው ስለዚህ ከተቆረ እንስሳት ነው The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on him in the old day of Pentecost, lighting up all the depart from the earth as a tinder from him, and from the east wind came to all the world. Uniting people in the love of man and God, In your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God, the Mother, the Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace.
for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. My sisters and brothers, the church is one body and one spirit wherever it is in the world.
abundance. You have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> 